Hello everybody, it's Andrew Hutchings here, still not a doctor, still never giving medical advice. If it seems like I am, I'm just consolidating medical information and putting it all in one place along with my opinion. This video is about are irreversible inhib I mean, do irreversible inhibitors irreversibly screw you up for the rest of your life? I mean, they bind irreversibly to an enzyme. They never unbind. So for the whole rest of your existence, that enzyme will never work again. So you may be thinking that's horrible or that's great, depending on if you like the enzyme or not. But the thing is, when you take the enzymes out of commission, your body makes new enzymes. Now, the important difference between an irreversible and, revert and competitive inhibitor is if you are being poisoned so if somebody were to poison you with a competitive inhibitor, you could knock it off the receptors and save your or enzymes and say or receptors, whatever it is. You could have an irreversible thing that binds to a receptor. It, it, it long, but it doesn't matter. Receptor enzyme, wherever it's binding, if something is crucial to your life, for your life support of your body, when it's not working, you die. If it's a competitive binding, you can knock it off, save your life. But if it's covalently bound, it's irreversibly bound, you cannot knock it off. You will die. Unless there's some way you can bypass the need for that enzyme or that receptor activation or whatever. But in normal circumstances where you're taking a medication to decrease the activity of an enzyme that is not essential for you to stay alive, they're essentially the same. Yes, there are differences, and there are situations in which they differ, but for the most part, they work the same. Irreversible inhibitors do not permanently change you. You stop taking them, and it's only a matter of days or weeks uh, before you're back to normal. I mean, perhaps there is an enzyme somewhere in your body that if you destroy it, your genes just won't turn back on until something else happens, but normally your body can sense that it needs this, activates the genes, makes more enzyme. I mean, your body likes to be in equilibrium. You push up, it pushes down, you know, to e even things out. I mean, it, you push up, it pushes this back down. It, I mean, in other situations, it would go like this, but in this situation that we're talking about in this video, it's like you get rid of the enzyme, your body makes more of it. So the difference is, for like medications, is technically if you took an irreversible inhibitor, it means that if you took a different medication for some reason that can also bind to that thing, even if it had a higher affinity, it would not bind, whereas if you took a competitive inhibitor and then you took some other medication but it just happens to have way better, affini higher affinity, well that inhibitor would no longer be doing anything or it would not be doing as much as you would hope it would be. So say, say it's an aromatase inhibitor since this is a fitness channel. <laughs> If you had an estrogen molecule, and what I mean by that is some sort of chemically similar molecule to an estrogen, some sort of estrogen analog with super high affinity to the aromatase enzyme, and you've got an anastrozole on there, your arimidex, it could knock it off. Because when something is not irreversibly bound, it's on there, but it comes off. And then it's on there, and it comes off. But it's on there most of the time, so it's blocking it. But it is coming off once in a while. So if you have another molecule, like that super high affinity estrogen analog, when it comes off for a second, it, it swoops in there and it binds to that receptor. And now, well, the, because it has a higher affinity, it doesn't come off very often, so it's on there much longer. And then once in a great while it comes off, but it has a higher affinity than the anastrozole. So it goes right back on, and the anastrozole can't get in there. But if you had eczema stain bound to the 
aromatase enzyme, it doesn't come off. So even if you have a super high affinity estrogen analog over there, it doesn't come off. It never gives it the chance to bind. So it cannot bind to that enzyme. It could bind to a different enzyme that doesn't have the eczema stain on it yet, but it cannot bind to an enzyme that has come into come to be bound to the eczema stain. I hope you like this video. Check out my other videos. Leave a like, leave a subscribe, hit a bell icon. I mean, you can click your mouse like a zillion times anywhere you want on the computer screen, but make sure you also click it over those icons. And you can hit whatever keys you want on your computer, but click in the bo comment box and hit the keys. And then click uh, post or enter. And you can click whatever keys you want afterwards too, and before and tomorrow and the next day, but leave a couple key clicks in the comment box. And you can hire me for training, diet, supplements, not medical advice, but you can hire me for stuff like this video where I just take information and I give it to you. And I can give you my opinion, but I cannot give you advice. I cannot say, eat the psychedelic blueberries. I mean, there aren't psychedelic blueberries, but I was going to say eat the blueberries, but that's, they're just normal food. So I think you could say eat them because it's not medical advice, but if they had like psychoactive drugs in them, like psychedelics, I could not say eat them because that would be a medication or maybe it would be considered a supplement if they were all natural. I don't know, but I can't give you medical advice and you can check out my Instagram natural underscore true underscore fitness. My website, which hopefully will be up by the time you see this video, andrewhutchings.org. And remember, those buttons, that comment box, costs you nothing. And you can click in everything wherever you want, any other time of the day, any other day. But leave some clicks in there and check out my other videos.